everybody. So today we are with Tammy Rampersad and we can't wait to start this pretty awesome interview. Like I really can't wait to be speaking with you because Tammy, we had the Hashtag We Are One event and you shared a lot with us and I felt so connected with you. It was like a special moment with you personally. Like I was listening to you and kind of seeing myself in you and obviously I cried <laughs> so I really wanted to go a little bit deeper into that conversation that you had with us and you shared your story absolutely and I <clears throat> if I could start by thanking you for inviting me to that event and what you said I think every single person in the room felt at that event yeah. every single person that spoke had something different to deliver and a different way of connecting with every single one of us in the room. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a very powerful event. And I felt for the first time in my life, I felt safe to say some of those things out loud that I've never done before. Wow. Oh my God, it made me feel so good. Like I feel like I'm gonna cry already. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was really true. And then you shared a lot of like your sexual abuse that happened when you were a child. And um, as soon as you share that, it was like I had a flashback when I was a young kid. And I remember um, my, my mother um, had to kind of ask my father to have my oldest brother and sister to like live with them. And it was just me and my mother. Mm. And then my mother decided to actually uh, put me in a private school with all nuns. So it was kind of like a weird dynamic at that time because I was really young and the oldest was always bullying the youngest and whatnot. But I remember going back home to my mother every two weekends. And I remember one weekend where it was very, um, like I tried to hide it and put it deep, mm. um, like a little box inside my heart and my mind also, where I tried not to think about it too much. Um, I remember it was um, a day, it wasn't nice outside, and we had, um, I don't know how it happened, but the light went out, and my mom had uh, a friend of hers that was there, and I was sitting on his lap, mm -hmm. and just randomly, like, at a, even now as an adult, I'm 29 years old now, and I'm still trying to have, like, rethink, like, why mm -hmm. and how did it happen it or, kind of sense. yeah, like, it's kind yeah. of hard. And I remember just touching something but not realizing what it was that I was touching. Mm -hmm. And my mom went and was looking for candles and a lighter to light it up and whatever. And then when the light came back up, my mom just looked at me very angry. Mm -hmm right and she told me to go in my room mm -hmm. and she didn't have any conversations with me after that and I was like still in a moment of like what did I do right. as a child to deserve that and when you shared your story it got me back into that moment of not knowing as a kid what was I touching like what was I doing like this this yeah. was an adult abusing me and I wasn't mm -hmm. and I didn't Put the two and two together until you actually shared your story wow yeah yeah it's um it was the first time that i've spoken about it out loud like that to a crowd my immediate family knows and my really good friends know <laughs> what happened to me but <clears throat> um when you asked us to be vulnerable and even going through therapy this is something I felt that I had to do for myself to kind of take back the power. Yeah. And as emotional as it was and scary as it was, um, I felt like afterward it was really good for me to do that. Um, and part of that was because there were several people in that room that came up to me and said that my story resonated with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many more women and men yeah. have gone through some type of abuse like that. And, and we don't even know. The numbers are just 
out of control, right? Yeah. And it's what's sad too is that <clears throat> not only do we suffer the abuse, but like you said, your mom never talked to you about it and mm -hmm. stuff. So carrying that with you and not knowing where to package it and not knowing how to deal with it and mm -hmm. move past it, that's that's hard too. Yeah. And I, I, I felt like for me, I turned 50 yeah. in January and um, for me, the last few years is really when I started to unpackage all of this. And yeah. I think the Me Too movement um, came out publicly and, you know, going through life, I had always known what had happened and mm -hmm. it was never dealt with. But the Me Too movement came out publicly and I felt like something just smacked me in my face. Yeah. And um, I had to, for my own personal sanity, figure out what to do with that and how to move past it. It happened when I was so much younger, but it still affects you. If you don't deal with things, they don't just fade away in your yeah. life, right? Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's, it's um, to the detriment of my relationship with my parents. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but that's, that's part of it. You really do have to deal with it. Yeah. You have to be able to speak about it. And, <clears throat> and recognize those opportunities because for you too, for me, it was something that was ongoing, mm -hmm. but abusers, they're smart. Yeah. They know how to groom you. They know how to grow those opportunities and do it in such a way that makes you feel like you've done something wrong. Yeah. You're terrified to tell and ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you're threatened like I was that harm was gonna come to a loved one. Yeah. You know, so we sit with that baggage and carry it through and never really know how to navigate it properly. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I'm with my business now. One of my clients is the Bolsutra Family Crisis Center. Mm -hmm. So the Courage Center there, and they help so many women and children navigate this kind of stuff. And, you know, they're a client of mine, but they allow me to still do work that makes my heart happy. Yeah. They are, <clears throat> sorry, they are a resource that I wish I had as a child. Mm -hmm. And I never did and I never even knew that those resources were out there. So how amazing is it that there really are people in our community yeah. that help, mm -hmm. you know, at the right age and help people navigate that going through life. Yeah, right. and I think you're literally doing the same thing, right? By sharing your story and by being vulnerable you are that person that you needed when you were younger. Um, do you mind just sharing just a little bit of like what happened and how did that affect you growing up? Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so I was, my dad never knew his biological father. He was raised um, by somebody um, who came into his mother's life when he was, I believe, like three years old. Mm -hmm. So this gentleman, although he wasn't his biological father, he was his dad, mm -hmm. really, and he was my grampy <clears throat> and uh, somebody we trusted. And, you know, I didn't have the best at-home life either. Mm -hmm. um, some of what I spoke about there wasn't just sexual abuse. Yeah. It was, um, you know, my dad was an alcoholic mm -hmm. and he was very violent. Um, so that's another thing that predators know. They know who's vulnerable mm -hmm. and, and how to work that. Um, I was watching, it's, it's interesting, I watched Oprah years ago. Yeah. Um, and she had done like these interviews with predators and molesters and learned so much from mm -hmm. them. And there's so much into what they do and what they know that they're doing. Um, anyhow, being with that side of the family outside of my home brought me joy and was a comfort in a lot of ways. They had a hobby farm. I love animals. Um, my dad's two youngest sisters were there and they were my favorite aunts. They were younger, a lot of fun. Yeah. So I loved going there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be there alone a lot. Um, my grandmother had a stroke um, years ago and um, wasn't as mobile. Yeah. She would go to bed early. My two aunts that were young would be out. So there was opportunity for me to be alone with my grampy. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah things started you know it's it started really simple um like he would he would he would always cook because my nan um was sh from her stroke she couldn't cook um so he would always cook so he would teach me cooking and i thought that that was really exciting you know um the first memory that i have tying everything back to it all starting mm -hmm was um, one night in the kitchen, we were alone, and uh, he asked me to sit on his lap and uh, asked me if I wanted to have a sip of alcohol mm -hmm. and um, try smoking. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was touching and things progressed from there. Yeah. For me, I have two younger brothers. Uh, one's three years younger than me and one's eight years younger than me. <clears throat> the one three years younger than me, closer in age, he loved going there too. When he could go, he's, he's very much an adventurous, outdoorsy guy, loved the animals. Um, and he wasn't a baby like my other brother. Yeah. Um, so that Grampy also knew that I cared about him. Mm -hmm. And because often when things would get really hard at home, it was my brother and I in yeah. the room. We would hide in one of the bedrooms together and I can't even tell you how many times we planned to run away, you know. Um, we were kind of our safety net together. Mm -hmm. So um, it was one of those things that he held over my head and uh, said that he would hurt my brother, you know, if I ever told. And of course you're young. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to smoke. I'm not allowed to drink. I don't know what is happening and what I did to deserve it and how it all fits in my world. And uh, I was scared. Yeah. Um, and I talked about this part in, in, um, at the event too. This is the part that really, so years and years later, mm -hmm. now I said I'm turning 50. My brother came out here, he lives in Ontario, he came to visit me a few years ago and he and I went, the kids were in school for the day and he and I took the day we went to Hopewell Rocks. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting there having lunch after and talking, talking about life, talking about very deep things. And he had told me that he has these memories and dreams of things um, with Grampy that weren't quite right. Mm -hmm. And it just killed me because, you know, obviously this never makes sense. It's never okay what happened to me. Yeah. Um, but I thought through all of these years, at least I was protecting my brother from getting hurt. Yeah. And so when he had these questions and said them to me, he opened himself up to me. I don't know what happened to him for yeah. real, but it, it just killed something inside of me because I thought if anything could make sense, at least it was that I was protecting, protecting him. him. Yeah. And now I don't even know if I did that. Um, yeah, he really doesn't know. So I just saw him. He came to visit with his wife. Um, they came to the island for their anniversary and Warren and I got to go over for a day and spend the day with them and, and a dinner and it was nice, but it's just sad, yeah. right? It's, there's so many victims and, and people that are hurt in different ways throughout this whole entire process and ordeal that, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't. Definitely. Like, how did you cope, like, growing up? Like, did you get into, like, for me personally, like, I felt, I feel like I went into bad relationships into bad relationships because I didn't know what a good one looked like, right? Yeah. Um, coming to a, a household of violence and then mm -hmm. being abused mm -hmm. uh, sexually, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and then becoming a teenager and you're like, oh, I know what love is, yeah. right? Because my past experience, everybody was telling me that they loved me, right? Um, and that's the thing that is really bad, like every abuser tells you like they love you. And as you're growing up, you think that that's love. Did you experience the same thing or how was it? Yeah, and I, I think for me, um, so much of it is wrapped around my self-worth. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, it's funny because I say that I, I feel like I've had two different lives yeah. because moving here and, you know, getting married and, and moving here and being with Warren and having our family, it's light years away from how I grew up. Mm -hmm. They would have no, you know, understanding of what that world is like. Um, so for me, it was hard. I didn't value myself. I didn't see myself as really worthy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't put my best foot forward. I didn't give a lot of effort to things in life until really, you know, I had kids. Yeah. And then it, again, my second life kind of started because then I started giving myself back and became part of this community that I love and appreciate so much. Mm -hmm. But I think part of my love for this community is what it gave back to me without, without it even knowing, yeah. you know, um, Riverview in New Brunswick has given me, um, a safety and a big, big hug that I don't think I've ever had, um, in my life before. Yeah. So, um, I've always just wanted to keep giving myself back to it. Wow, well, like I feel like you. I know. I, I understand. <laughs> no worries. Like, it I, sounds I, I, funny. No, no, I get it 100%. And it's true. You know, after you have kids, there's a lot of things that just, like, your mind, your heart just changes so much because you're like, this is not just about me. It's about another human being, and I don't want them to go through the same thing I've been through. And I, I totally get it because the way that I grew up, like I try every single day not to put my kids in the same um, space or mm -hmm. not to talk to the kids the same way my mother talked to me or not to say things the way my mother said to me and just trying to give them a different type of life, the one that I wish that I had. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I kind of totally connect with you. And the thing is like, even without you realizing it, you're impacting people's life in such a like strong way that I don't really even think you realize it yet though. Mm. You know, um, after the event, I remember you hugging me and saying like, I hope I did good, I hope you're proud. And I was like, my goodness, like I am beyond proud of you. Uh, by sharing that, everybody that was there, you, it was like a moment, like everybody was silenced and just looking at each other, you know, uh, going back home and having like messages or calls, everybody saying like, oh my God, like when Tammy shared, this happened to me, or oh my God, I remember this happening to me when I was younger, but I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think it through. And now after sh she was sharing her story, I was like, oh my God, this is what it was, you know, this is abuse, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes like, a we, we don't see that, we don't think about that. And um, I remember I did share a little bit about like uh, my mom's husband and mm -hmm. his father, how they used to always pick on me because yes. I was very developed yeah. <laughs> as a young kid. Yeah. I, I grew up faster than a yeah. lot of other young kids of my age where um, my breasts were showing early, mm -hmm. you know, I had a lot of curves mm -hmm. as, as a young la black Latina, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt so uncomfortable that just now in my late twenties that I feel okay with my body. Growing up, I just hated my body. I just wanted to hide it all the time. And I didn't realize why. I thought it was just because I was shy, Yeah. right? If I was going to the beach, I had a huge sweater on. Oh, I didn't want so <laughs> I didn't want anybody to see my curves. I didn't want anybody to see what I was looking like underneath. Um like literally you could see pictures of me. Yeah. Uh winter, summer, spring, fall, I had a huge sweater on. Like an extra large sweater on. Um and it was like a thing of like, oh my god, like you don't know how bad somebody can destroy you mm. until like you work on yourself and you surround yourself with great people that you're like i wish i had um this strength that i have now yeah as a young girl you yes. know like i know that i had it but like now i'm like i wish that i had somebody yes, yes. like i am right now yes 
beside her and telling her everything is gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And um, just encouraging her that she's gonna have a great life and yeah. great kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally, I totally get that. And and when I talked about the center, that's that's what I mean. There are people that are doing that out there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thankful. We yeah. just need to make sure that people feel safe, yeah. right? Yeah. Like right now, people feel safe yeah. and loved and uh, know their worth, and uh, that that those outlets are there, yeah. and we can help them find the help that they need right because it, it really is true when you don't resolve this stuff yeah. it doesn't just go away no it it defines you yeah. and you need to take your power back and um and use it for good and i i never really realized that it was something that i held tight yeah. to me um so when you asked me to be vulnerable and i i said it out loud mm -hmm even though I was crying and it wasn't my best speaking <laughs> moment, um, you gave me power that day. And to be honest, for us, it was like the most beautiful moment ever. Um, maybe for you, it wasn't the best speaking moment in, in, in your head, in your mind. But to be honest, for us, it was like the most beautiful thing ever. Because again, you did inspire us in ways that you don't even know like oh. the, the impact that you have in so many people is incredible and i just wish that you can put all the things that happen to you right and just turn it around and make something beautiful with it mm -hmm. and Lemonade. yeah exactly right <laughs> and, and that's something really inspiring because like uh, as i was sharing and across uh, high schools here in New Brunswick about my story and, yeah. and everything. It was like a moment after I was sharing, you were, I was sitting in my car and just reading all the feedbacks from all the youth and I was just crying. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. But at the same time, I was like, this is me. That's me, that's me, mm -hmm. that's me. It was like, mm -hmm. what can we do? How can we work together to make a change in this world, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like the thing is, it's not about me. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. It's about the next generation mm -hmm. and what they can do to make this world a better place. It's like, yeah. what for you, like, what do you think or what do you feel like we should do as a community? I think that's a great question. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm going to push that right back on you because having events like you had and asking people to be vulnerable and open themselves up in different ways because we all have different experiences yeah. that has resonated with other people and helped them so it did help me but there were several people that reached out to me that i didn't even know that day never mind the ones that i do know but people that reached out to me that i had never met that my story resonate, resonated with them and yeah. it gave them something back. So I think for us, um, and off camera, we were talking about this too. Um, you know, when we know people, mm -hmm. you know only what people show you and allow you to know about yeah. them. You don't really fully know people. Mm -hmm. So we need to walk around this world knowing that yeah. and knowing that everybody has real life going on. Yeah. And sometimes people react to things that we don't even know exist yeah. and we just see, you know, the byproduct, but there's meat there somewhere mm -hmm. causing them to be that way. So we need to be better humans and know that everybody has a story yeah. and everybody is going through something, mm -hmm. but we need to be able to share the world with people and help them feel like it's a safe space. I felt like that was a safe space that day. Yeah. I felt so comfortable to open up and mm -hmm. it's because of all of you there, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that those things are things that we can do. Mm -hmm. And of course, help support the people who are doing so good out there, mm -hmm. right? There really are so many gaps in our world and in our government mm -hmm. that these great groups are doing, like look what you're doing, helping to feed people you know, and, and give them their necessities in life. Yeah. When, if you're not doing it, who's gonna do it for them, yeah. right? Maybe nobody. Mm -hmm. So 
keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a wonderful job yeah. in so many ways. So I just think that we need to be our best selves and be really understanding with other people. So thankful, Tammy, for you to sit down with me and having this deep conversation. And I feel like we can go on and on I know, for hours. I know we could, I, but right? no, you, um, you hold a special spot in my heart. And, um, you know, I know that you have many achievements and many highlights from that vulnerable event. But even if you just take take one away, know that you changed my life that day for real. And you changed mine. Because now there's a lot of things that I wasn't sure if I wanted to share. And it made me open my eyes more, you know, because I saw you as this. And I know, like I, we said many times, everybody has a story. And I saw you as this incredible woman, but not anymore. I see you as this powerful woman. You know, like you're a superwoman to me. See? And you have every to call me every day. <laughs> I had to call you yeah. every day and just like every morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you just have that, that thing for me. Every time that I see your name, I, I, I see you as a person. And that's the thing that I really want to share with our community is like, don't just see the titles. See the person yes. itself. And it's yes. beyond amazing what yes. you can the things that you can connect with one another and what the other person can teach you. Mm -hmm. right? I'm so proud of you. Oh. I am. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I love you so much. Thank, Thank you. you too. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Tammy, for sharing your inspiring story and everybody tune in for next time as we are having a lot more inspiring and powerful story from leaders across Atlantic Canada. Thank you. Thank you.